Chapter 6 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronze, 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 bronze for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronze, 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 bronze for a pet. Singing her brontosaurus song in a louder and louder voice, Lulu was waking up nappers all over the forest. Some were annoyed, some were extremely annoyed. Among the extremely annoyed was a silky, slinky lady tiger who yawned and stretched and rubbed her bright green eyes and then with a ferocious roar sprang out from behind some trees and pounced on Lulu. You're a big pain, the tiger said, so I'm going to eat you up for my afternoon snack. Uh-oh, said Lulu, I'm bonking you on the head. And swinging, swinging with all her might, Lulu bonked the tiger with her suitcase. The tiger yelled, Ow! And fell down in a pitiful black and orange striped heap on the forest floor. Lulu brushed off a few tiger hairs that were stuck to the side of her tiger bonking suitcase and went on trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter 7 As the afternoon turned into late afternoon and then into early evening, Lulu trudged ever deeper into the forest. When she felt hungry, she opened her suitcase and took out a pickle sandwich. When she felt cold, she took out a sweater and socks. And when it got buggy, she opened her suitcase and took out some bag spray and sprayed. She was feeling a little tired, but she kept trudging and swinging her suitcase and singing her song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto, bronto, brontosaurus for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto, bronto, brontosaurus for a pet. Now, a big black bear who liked listening to the music that insects make in the early evening couldn't hear their song because Lulu's was louder. Plus, a lot of the insects were deader because Lulu kept on spraying them with her spray. This made him mad, then madder, then madder than that. He growled a thunderous growl. And then he lumbered heavily down the forest path and stood on his two hind legs in front of Lulu. Waving a big clawy paw in her face, he said, You're interrupting my favorite program. Please don't give me an argument. In this story, bears are allowed to have favorite programs. So I'm going to scratch you to pieces with my claws. Lulu glared at the big black bear and put her hands on her hips. Nobody's scratching me, she told the bear. Then she jumped as high as she possibly could in the air. Then she landed as hard as she possibly could on his foot. The bear yelled, Ow! and went limping away as fast as a bear could limp with one stomp foot. And after shaking some broken bear toenails off the bottoms of her bear stomping shoes, Lulu went trudging deeper into the forest. Chapter 8 Lulu was now in the deepest, darkest, quietest part of the forest. It was getting quite late and she was getting quite tired. She took her sleeping bag out of her suitcase, spread it on the ground and lay down to sleep. But before she slept, she sang her song once more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto, bronto, bronto sorrows for a pet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna get a bronto, bronto, bronto sorrows for a pet. Actually, she never even got to sing the last line because before she could get to it, she was slipping. Chapter 8 and 1 half At dawn, Lulu woke to the sound of birds calling to one another. and the dusky, musky smell of the forest floor and the feel of a gentle late summer breeze blowing across her face and the taste, because she hadn't bothered to brush her teeth before bedtime, of yesterday's pickle sandwich. She also woke to the sight of something so huge, so enormous, so utterly gigantic that she thought, no, she was sure, 
that she was still dreaming. It looked like a mountain, except this mountain had legs, a very long neck, and a very small head. It was, as I'm sure you've already figured out, the brontosaurus that Lulu had been searching for.